All right. I just wanted to make sure that we get going. Now, uh, one thing to let you folks know, uh, I know Steve was mentioning the number of bookmarks I have out in Digo, but I just want you to know that it's my, when we talk about the social bookmarking side, it's definitely the social side that's gotten me to the collection that I have now. I started out on Delicious, and we'll take a look at that, and Digo as well. But I just wanted to say it was my uh, fellow uh, DIN stars or DIN members, uh, Twitter Plurk members. It's my social networking, personal learning community that's actually helped me learn about all these resources and continue to uh, help me grow. So I want to just thank all of you with that, first of all. So what I'm going to start off with, uh, as you see there in the listing or er up early in the uh, chat, is hopefully the URL for this. Uh, resource collection that I have here. Uh, one of the first ones I want to start out with and just show you guys, and I'm going to minimize this, hopefully I don't close you out, good, is share tabs. Now I don't know very, you know, many of you are familiar with this one, but the reason I kind of like this, a few years ago, Ginger Lumen or Ginger TPLC, if you guys know her, uh, showed this to me because I was going, okay, everybody keeps coming up with these collections of great resources. I want to share them with my own teachers. What's one way? And Ginger goes, have you ever seen share tabs? And I said, no. And basically what share tabs is, as you can kind of see here, and let me give you in the chat window, here is a URL that I have went ahead and pre-made. So if you want to take a look at it, feel free to. If you guys already have my re this presentation resources up, you can get to it too. But there you are. But basically, what's really nice is I can go in here and customize my URL I want to do. So I might say DIN webinar and then just say 2010. And then here I could just put in whatever length I want. And you could put a whole collection of them in. Got to keep us Kansas folks there. But you can kind of get the idea there. And then all you need to do is, after you're done putting them in, is just hit Tabify them, and there you are. There's your link. There it is. So you could either take the one that is created by ShareTabs or take the one that you created yourself. And I'll just click on it, and there you are. That's how it would look. And what's nice is you get the thumbnails or come up to the tabs, and there's the actual website. And if you notice, we haven't even left the share tab itself, to be honest with you. I'll go back to preview, so you can kind of see how that goes. Let me do something. Hopefully this will simple, make it a little easier probably for everybody to see. There we go. So that was share tabs. Now, is there, I'm going to look at chat window real quick. Is there any of you that are familiar with share tabs, or is this new to you, first time you've seen share tabs? Uh, Jocelyn, if you scroll towards the top of the chat window, there's my link to this, all these resources for you. Good. I'm glad there's some of you that share tabs is new to you. Hopefully some of these others are there. Uh, the next one I want to show you guys is you know, Furley, but what's nice, this one actually came to me from C.C. Long, who's also a Discovery Educator, Star Educator, and uh, I wanted to give her credit for that. And what you'll see here is here is a sample one for those of you that don't have the resource window open that I provided. Let me give you that URL. Okay, there's, oops, share tabs. It'll help if... Uh, Now let's see if it plays nice. There we go. There's the Furley one. Now this one's going to be similar in functionality. What we'll just do is in here, just put in your link. So we may have a, oh, let's go.
and hit go. Now here's our sample URL that was created by Furley. And if I just hit try it, now you'll notice the Furley side here will provide the website for you. And you notice we have three way we have a couple ways of getting to this. You could go to the next one just using the arrows. It jumped on me. That was the first time that one's done that to me. Let me see what I get here. You guys will have to excuse me on this, just getting involved in the Mac world here. But you can kind of see how then you can jump around on the websites. And there was that drop down window there that we could use. Present. Uh, go back into Furley. But anyway, you saw that on there, and we'll just jump. Do that again real quick. Let's just go. And, one, and the other thing I was just going to show you guys was this right here is you can go ahead and jump between here. If you don't want to use the arrow keys, you could do in the drop down window. And then it'll let you expand. But that's just one quick way of showing you guys another site. And like I said, CC Long had shown given this to me as an idea. Now has anyone seen this one before? And it's all quiet in the room. Oh, okay, good. All right. Um, any questions over share tabs or Furley so far? Okay. I'm going to jump on to a third one here to show you guys, and then we'll get into the ones that were more common to uh, to us being delicious in Digo. This is called Link Bunch, and this one came from another fellow star educator, Ann Truger. And what you're basically going to do here as well is just compile your links right in this box, and you're going to bunch them. So if we were taking a look at this sample for you to take a look at, you'll see some of them that I'd already done. But basically, it's the same concept. Just throw them in. Get the chat window out of your way. Rock Chalk Jayhawks, i got to do that. And then we'll just put this final one in as just... Uh, Oh. And then we'll just hit bunch. Here's our link bunch. As you know, it automatically creates the new URL. And now I will tell you here is that when you click this, you're going to see how things open up again. And it's going to open up all of those links. So now that's the one thing that I'm real cautious about using that one is how all of a sudden, boom, 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 here's your tabs. Rather than keeping it nice and neat, like you saw in Furley or in group tabs, this one, or share tabs, this one just pops them open. So those are some things to kind of keep in mind. But one thing I'll point out to you, and we'll get into this to later, later, is you'll see this little sticky note. This is a Digo feature where people could go ahead and put comments on publicly or privately. So just as a forewarning, You'll notice that sometimes public comments, people don't always think appropriately before they type something. So that's just a little FYI for later down the road. But that kind of gives you an idea of what that one will do for you. So there's some advantages to it, some disadvantages because of how it pops everything open. So that's just one of those kind of keep your uh, mind open to what could happen to you when you're doing stuff. So. All right, any questions over share tabs, Furley, or Link Bunch? 
Right, Peggy, you could do the screenshots, and we'll get to those here in a little bit. All right. Well, let's uh, go ahead and jump over to Delicious. Uh, how many of you that are in here right now are already currently using Delicious? You can get a yay or nay in there in the old chat window. Most of you are. So, hey, if there's if there's things that comments that you guys want to make, you know, on behalf of Delicious and how you use it, please, please put it in the chat window so that way, you know, you share your thoughts and all. I mean, again, this is what it's all about is the uh, social networking aspect of things. But the big thing that I liked originally from West Fryer is the ease, the easiness or the simplicity of using Delicious with the toolbar and doing that. And, and that's the way I started out with things. And, and you know, one thing to also keep in mind, and, you know, I'm kind of probably preaching to the choir here, is the fact that by keeping your bookmarks in Delicious, Digo, whatever it would be, with it being web-based, you can get to them from any computer with or anything, you know, basically that's your mobile phone, your iPad, whatever it's going to be as long as you have your Internet access. And it's not so limited to that one single machine that, uh-oh, there went my hard drive, there went my bookmarks, or, well, they re-imaged it and didn't ask me if I want to save them. So that's the wonderful side of the social bookmarking. So, yeah, just keep all those benefits in mind when you're talking with folks. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to minimize this and bring my browser back up and actually go out to my delicious bookmarks and just kind of show you a few things. I do have this one up, this site up. I don't know if you guys have come across this one or not, but this is a great wiki. I was just looking at it earlier today. It came across on Twitter. And again, it's just talking about using a wiki in the classroom and best practices, as you see there. So to add it to the delicious, if those of you that are not familiar with this, Basically, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to tag this. Here's the title. I could put notes in here about this. Um, so you can tell by I'm typing a little nervous type thing. But make sure you put your tags in there. If you guys don't understand what tags are, these are the keyword searches. So in your Google or whatever search engine you prefer, those are the ways to go ahead and do that. So we'll just say wikis, uh, instruction. And as you see, I type stuff. It'll come up with the numbers by the tags and show you how many times or how many tags are in those categories. So, so that kind of gives you an idea. Now, here's the thing. I could actually send this out on Twitter or email this to friends. Now, you could use a network side, and I'm going to hit Save, and now it's added to my delicious. So it's as simple as that on there. I'm going to refresh this page. Sorry with the back background noise there. The janitors were just walking in. <laughs> so, but you could see we just bookmarked this, and you could see how I can now go back in and edit. Here's my tags. I could even change how I want my display options to be in Delicious. I could sort by date, which I've got now alphabetical. I prefer date. Now, how many of you out there prefer when you're searching your bookmarks to put it alphabetical? Or would you prefer using dates? And it's quiet in the room. <laughs> Never quite get used to that. Yeah. It's kind of that's kinda of like uh some training sessions I had. I'll start asking questions, everybody's like <laughs> Get the old stare in the zone going. Um, the other thing I want to talk about also in here 
is, and I'm going to browse you around, jump you around on some stuff, including some of this new stuff up here that they talk about with bundles. But here's a new thing that Deco's had for a while, but Delicious now has in beta, is when I want to browse, I could actually browse these bookmarks by going right here and on that link, there we go. And I could just start going through, but obviously I'm not going to take you guys through 4,500 4, bookmarks. But you kind of get the idea. This is your way of quickly browsing your, those websites or some of your bookmarks that you would have in there. There we go. Back to the page. Under uh, bookmarks. I could look at my bookmarks, which is what we're looking at. I could go to the most popular bookmarks, which is really nice. And this is the next thing about this is these are bookmarks I'm not going to have in a lot of cases. So this is where the social networking aspect and the sharing of your resources really come in is with this popular side. So, you know, as we take a look at stuff, Oh, here's a good one. It says 30 killer web development screencast to find your tune and your skills. If I wanted to save that and add that to mine, my own bookmarks, I'm going to just click here on save. And there's what you saw earlier. So now I could say screencast, tutorials, videos. And again, there's the notes if I wanted to and just hit save, and there we go. And if how many of you do not understand these numbers right here on the right-hand side? I'm going to bring chat up real quick. Move that over. Is there anyone over there do not? Carla, you're saying, okay. Basically what this is is 283 people have bookmarked this same one, 326, 80, 92, 39. So that's another side of that social aspect is, hmm, I wonder how many other people feel that this site is resourceful and worth bookmarking. And that gives you an idea because Delicious will go through and let you know how many people also have bookmarked that same one. So yes, it's just like Laura says, that's how popular and useful that is. That's exactly right. Back under bookmarks again, and I'm going to say recent, and here's the most recent ones. And again, this is the social side of things because these aren't always mine. Hey, Allison, thanks. I see you've uh, <laughs> got my uh, EduBlog site. Although I will say that I'm moving it over to, and Steve will appreciate this, I'm moving it over to the Discovery blog. So all my stuff's going to be eventually just on the Discovery side of things. So I had to put that plug in for the uh, advantages of DIN, being able to host your own blog there and not have to go out to the other resources. So those of you that are not DIN stars you need or DIN members, you need to really seriously consider that and take advantage of some of those privileges that you have. So. Now, the other thing I wanted to quickly show you is you could even look up by URL. So if we go in here and just say, and there's everybody, history-wise, that have bookmarked it. So again, here's your, and different tags. It, I always find it interesting to be able to go and look back at different tags people use for different things because, you know, there may be things that I don't even think about. Now, another thing also talking about the flexibility or popularity of a site, you could go to view chart and it even shows you who was the first one to save Discover Education's URL, D Meyer 711 on you know, January 20th of 06, but look at the popularity. Now, here's a question for you, Steve. Does that kind of reflect the growth in the DIN also in schools joining or using Discovery? I would say so. So if you guys can just imagine that side of things, you could see how you could really see the popularity and the usefulness of a website grow 
by just using that timeline. And I really, really like that chart there. That's that's a a nice thing that, to be honest with you, I don't think Digo has. So we'll see if that appears sooner or later in a Digo thing as far as the chart. So, and if I'm wrong there, folks, you can correct me because I don't know all the stuff about Digo, but I I know that chart in here in Delicious is really nice to see that. Now. I want to show you, talk to you real quick again about the social networking side of things on the social bookmark. Here would be networks. What you could do is when you go to people's individuals that are out there using Delicious, you can join their network per se, and their network means now you're joining and following their bookmarks, basically, to put it in those terms. But um, you'll be able to see, like under my network, you know, I'm following these folks over here, and you also notice that you have a mutual fan. So I'm a fan of Lee Colbert from Discovery, as well as she's a fan of mine. And then you can see if there's any new fans by the single flag that's up there. But you could see that in here with all of my stuff that we're looking at 26,784 bookmarks in those networks. So if you remember, mine was about 4,500. Now I'm up at 26,784 when I review also my fellow network or fellow members of Delicious. So that's, it's just powerful. And that's the big thing about the social side of thing is we always have to, a lot of people want to go to Google. Well, I'll be honest with you, I'll go to Delicious and Digo before I worry about Google for the simple fact, when I'm looking for a particular thing, I know typically in Delicious and Digo, most of the people I follow or the groups I'm members of are educators. Well, I'm going to look and see if the educators have already found a site, and it's simplified me, simplified the whole process now, because if they've bookmarked it, obviously they feel it's worthwhile, it's useful, and it's a great resource. So that just eliminated you know, 20 minutes of time for me now, I could really dig in and get after it. So that's the big great thing about all these side of the social networking and the social bookmarking is we can share, we can collaborate, and just, I guess you could say, do away with Google in some ways because now we just simplify the search process because we're helping one another. Any questions so far on the Delicious for those of you that may not be as familiar with Delicious? I hope I'm not going too fast. I keep looking over at the clock going, okay, pace yourself. <laughs> yes, Vicki, you can search up on the tags. You'll see right up here or type a tag. I could put in here uh, science. And there's 500, and let me move this out of the way. Is that a little easier if I move it to the top for you guys? You'll see that now I'm in mine, using my network, so all those people that I'm fans of, I used the tag science and came up with 524 tags. And you can kind of go through there. So you can continue to get more specific as you want by using those keywords or those tags. <laughs> oh, you're welcome on that one, Patty. Um, let's, I want to go ahead and show you another thing. Go to subscriptions here. These are all different subscriptions that I've subscribed to that have like delicious tags that you can subscribe to. And again, like here, look how popular this one is. 6,274 people have tagged Visual Dictionary. And this is just all under education, non-readers, images. So it's just, like I said, it's a fascinating thing to kind of go back and look what everybody's using for tags because I know I've looked at some of the other delicious people that Steve recommended. I'm going, man, I didn't even think about those tags. So, again, it's that social aspect. Even though you're not talking face-to-face -face or chatting back and forth, you can get those ideas from one another and not just have to try to invent everything on your own. So that's one thing I'll definitely encourage you guys to do is, you know, take a look at those different tags and see if there's keywords that'll help you. 
Now, Inbox, this is a newer feature that I've noticed with or read through in reviewing some of the delicious stuff, is the ability to send people links with it while in delicious. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this part, but again, you know, we're talking the social bookmarking, social networking side of the things, and this is one big feature that Delicious is really wanting to start to promote, is to be able to send those. Uh, let me jump up here to subscription bundles for you guys, because this is something I was just kind of learning about myself. Let me move this out of the way. Now, how many of you have an idea why all of a sudden you see highlights here? Anybody have any ideas where what allowed me to highlight these? Hey, there you go, Peggy. Digo, you're right. <laughs> That's, I'm going to use this as my transition from delicious to Digo. Um, in here, this is the uh, delicious frequently asked questions. But it explains to you in here, and what's also nice, folks, is on Digo is if I highlight this stuff, and when I bookmark this and save it with the highlights, those that are in Digo will also see what I've highlighted when you visit that site based off of the collaboration side of things. And that's what's great is I can read through something that somebody's already highlighted, and I could add highlights to it. And there's, again, that social collaboration, that social networking side, even though I'm doing this all through bookmarks. But, again, in here, basically what you're seeing is says network bundles. You'll be able to have friends bookmarks separately from coworkers. So, you know, if you've got a, like my wife, for example, her women's sorority, if there's websites for cooking or any kind of little funny websites that they want to share amongst each other, they could go out, create a group, that in Delicious or Digo and share those resources just with that group. And then you can organize resources, even though you go to your Delicious account and see all your bookmarks, you can help organize it even more. If you think of a file cabinet, you've got in your file cabinet, top drawer might be science, the next drawer might be math, and on and on. You guys are creative. You can kind of picture that and come up with your own bookshelf, you could say. But what's really nice is how they are truly adopting the social networking, the social media aspect side of things, and just allowing everybody to collaborate and share resources and just be, you could say, one big learning community that we're all here for. But here in green, and I just use the different colors here in Digo to kind of show you some different advantages. You could use different colors, like here's yellow. What is social bookmarking? Now I'll show you guys real quick, as kind of like I said, my transition between Delicious to Digo here is to highlight, you'll see up here, well first of all, I'm getting ahead of myself, right up here are, is my Delicious toolbar. Now, I've got it appearing right now since we're talking about Delicious and Digo and the social bookmarking side. Typically, this won't be viewable because of how I do stay on Digo and predominantly uh, focus all my bookmarks there. Now, the one thing that I'll also point out to you is with those of you that are Delicious users, Digo will import your Delicious bookmarks, and in that way, you have them in both sites. And what I do is even though I predominantly use Digo, anytime I bookmark to Digo, it automatically goes to my delicious. So let's say Digo's down, I still have resource, I still have access to all of my bookmarks because they're in delicious. Some people go the other way. They go from delicious to Digo and use Digo as their backup. So that's the correlation that you're starting to see in a lot of the social bookmarking things. Chelsea's asking how to do that. Uh, remind me in a little bit, and we'll get to that one, Chelsea, about being able to import, export, do those things, and we'll show you. But anyway, you could see that. And if I wanted to, where I was back to here with Digo, 
I'm going to highlight this, and this pops up where I can highlight it. I could bookmark and highlight, but for right now, I just want to go into the highlight icon up here for Digo. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose the color green, and now I'm going to highlight that and highlight it, and there it is. So it's as simple as that. Now it's there. You'll also notice that anytime you highlight or bookmark something in Digo, you'll know that that site's bookmarked because this book right here turns red. For example, if I was to take a look at the summer, as Steve said, where everything will be archived, and here's the agendas for this week, next week, so make sure you guys kind of take a look at the other sessions that are going. But you'll notice now, and jump in between that page from the FAQ of Delicious with the red to the summer 2010, I'm not red. So for my bookmark, now I could click here on my icon. It's going to allow me to bookmark it. And now you'll see a difference in the delicious bar that you saw earlier to here. Now, I can make this private or public, just like you saw on the delicious thing. If you see a lock in there, that means it's a private bookmark. And if it's no lock, it's a, it's a public one. So this is another aspect of that social side. So if you're working with students, you can keep stuff private to where it's just with them. And I'll get to that here in a moment as well. But um, here are tags. When Digo reads the website, recommended tags that come within the website, you'll know sometimes people will create wikis or blogs and don't put any tags or keywords in. And then you can always go in and add your own. And we could say, uh, I'll just put in back to school week. And you can see how it goes and search for those and create you a list of them. But, and then I could say read later. Uh, I could send this directly out to Twitter. I could take a snapshot of the website. If you guys think about somebody asking, well, can you give me a snapshot of what's on your screen or a snapshot of that website, you could do that from right here. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a moment. Now, here's what's also nice is, besides using the tags, I can now say, I'm going to add this to a list. So here's like I was talking about, if you think of a, a file cabinet where a drawer is science, a drawer is math, a drawer is English. These are my, you could say, categories for each of my drawers. So I may go in here and go back down to add videos. But for this, I'm just going to go ahead and pop in tech Im implementation as my drawer. And what's also really cool is this right here. Now, I can share to a group. And the groups are ones that you create. And think of a group as being your class. This is my science class. This is my English class. Or this is my sorority group. This is my Discovery Educators Network. You know. So if I wanted to, I could jump right in here. Here's Discovery Educators Network. So anybody that is a member of that DEGO group for Discovery Education Network will get a like a daily log. And I'll show you those here in a moment also. But I'll put in here and say, And you could put your own message in there. I'm not the greatest speller. There we go. And now I'm going to hit Save. Now let me also show you the next thing is if I want to send that to another group, I'll turn around and go back in here, share to the group. And notice here on the bottom where it says already shared to, well, you'll see all the groups that sites are shared to. If no one shows, it's not been shared to a group. I've seen some that there may be nine different groups that that one single website has been to. And it's, it's 
really fascinating to take a look at those different <laughs> different groups because there may be groups that it's shared with that I'm not a member of that really catch my interest or may help me later. I'll go to put it to another group, hit save, and there you go. Now it's saved to that other group also. So that was a quick way of showing you how to bookmark and how to use the notes. Now the next thing I'll show you is I'm going to go right up here and off of my Digo toolbar. Now understand this Digo toolbar, I'm in Firefox. If you're in Safari, in Chrome, in if time provides, I might try to jump into those browsers and show you guys. But they, the toolbar won't be the same. This is how it looks in Firefox and IE. Safari uses a Digolette, is what they call it, and Chrome has a Digolette, but the Digolette between Safari and Chrome are even a little bit different. So depending on the browser you use, the bar is going to look a little different for the Digo side of things. And I hope that kind of ex helps explain a little bit of that, you guys. But um, we're going to take a snapshot. Here's where I could come right up here. And I can save it. And now it just uploaded Steve's picture to my Digo. So that way we could always have a picture of Steve. <laughs> but you can kind of see the, how it's really nice that they added that new feature for that. So if you need it for troubleshooting or if there's an image that you want to kind of get and be able to put it up to Digo, it's, it's awesome. That's how you can really take advantage of that tool and get some screenshots for what you need. The next thing I want to show you is earlier, do you guys remember seeing that number with the sticky note? And it had a number there, and when I moused over it, it showed discussions. Well, here's what we could do is on this next bubble, I'm going to add a floaty sticky note. Now, you'll notice here's the icon for it. Oops, disappeared on me. Also, what's nice is I could keep this private or make it a public sticky note. We'll see you, Smoke. Thanks for coming in. Um, and if I want to share that sticky note with just a particular group. Now, this is where it really gets good for the educators and being not just an educator myself, but also being the guy that wears the hat that people sometimes throw the bricks at and call, you're the filter Uh, you always hear tech Nazi. I always hate saying that since I'm one of them, but you always kind of hear some terms like that, or, yeah, you're the ones that control the filter, don't let us have anything. But this is the one thing that I always tell people when I'm talking about this stuff. This is how you can also help convince those guys to open those sites for you because you can keep everything private. So if you have a group of students in a class that you created, you can keep comments private just for those in the group. So if I wanted to share this one with Discovery Education Network, and I'm going to hit post, and there it is. And then you could actually carry on a conversation with folks. So if you're doing, your students are doing research, on a particular thing or, hey, here's a website, you're working with teachers and you can't necessarily meet with them face to face, say go out and explore these and with the sticky notes you could actually have a conversation going on of, you know, hey, is this useful, is it not useful? If it's useful, how do you see this being used in your class for you, for your students? So that's again the social networking aspect of this and all the bookmarking going on. And I'm going to close that out. And I'll leave that one there, so, but that would tell you right now that there is a comment there for you. The next thing, we could actually comment on the whole page if you wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. Up here is I could email this to folks like we showed you on Delicious. I could send it to my blog 
I can send it to Twitter like we saw. I can send it to Facebook. But what's also neat is here's the annotations. So you could actually annotate that website. Or we could hit close and we go back up here. Oop, sorry. Wrong one. Extract annotations. And then here's some different annotations from that website. So that's the, what's really nice about that. Now, one thing that was mentioned, I'm going to close this tab. Also, oops, I guess I closed that one of my tabs out I was going to show you guys. The next thing I want to show you was another piece of the uh, social networking side. You'll see here where it says I've got an alert for a new message. Let me pop this in. This is where Indigo, this is where I could post a message just to my fellow Digo people, members and everything, and carry on conversations. And what you'll see here is that there's different conversations. And see how this one's locked? That's a private conversation, where these will be public ones. You could see 31 people participated in this one, where 233 people viewed it. So you can kind of see the traffic of your conversation. Now this one here is one that I wanted to kind of get started and have folks be able to show you guys in this. And right here, this lady, Maggie, she is one of the gurus. She's one of the founders of Digo, and you'll notice that, and I'll be honest with you, she's awesome. She responds, she's, she's always involved. She's always asking teachers and educators what is it that you want that we don't have that we can get in, integrated into this? And I'll bring this up. And one thing I'll make sure I do is I'm going to copy this and put it into that binder for you guys. But you'll see here she has provided a link to social book uh, definition for social bookmarking, annotating, uh, the overview of Digo, Digo versus Delicious. Digo in education, and I mean, that's just because she wanted to be able to help contribute to this. She's just, and one thing you'll see in there, and I know she told in an email to me, is that if Discovery sometime wanted to do just a webinar on just Digo, she would be more than happy to help co-host it or conduct it or participate, whatever. Just let her know. But you guys can see right here again, is just the ongoing threaded conversation. And every one of these people here were putting their thoughts of the advantages of Digo or the advantages of Delicious, what was good of both, you know. So I'll make sure I get that put in there for you guys to take a look at. But, you know, that's a big piece of it. Another thing that I want to show you that's in Delicious or Digo, excuse me, is this unread piece. Right in here, if I was to go in, I could be at a website. I'll go right here, let's say. This is now, it says Mark is an unread bookmark. I can click on this, and all of a sudden, it will make that. So if you're in a hurry, and, oh, I don't have time to do this, you can use that function right here. And here's a list of all the different websites that I've got listed of, uh-oh, I need to go back and read. So it's one of those bookmarks, but it's an easy way of finding that bookmark for that website that you want to go back and read or that blog you wanted to go back and read. I don't have time to read that blog. Or let's think of a uh, Web 2.0 Smackdown where you got 60 and 60. Well, you know, they're showing you 60 different Web 2.0 tools in, six, in one minute. Cause they're, or, yeah, you got 60 seconds to show one tool and you're like, oh, I want to bookmark that and you, you're trying to keep up with somebody. At the uh, last conference I was at, I just kept hitting unread, 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 unread and there's my collection of stuff. So that way I could always go back to it and it's a short, quick way to get to there. Uh, recent bookmarks are right here. So those are different things. Um, let me show you this over here, and then I need to jump into Google, show you guys the lists or groups. 
because I could just keep going and going on this thing. But I'm going to jump out to... Uh, oops. I'm going to go to my library. And there's our screenshot of Steve. But you'll notice on the left-hand side, I could go to images. So anytime I have images, here's a quick way of getting to your images. So we should see Steve and the Digo screenshot talking about their transition from, you know, the early stages to now version 5. Here's my tags. So I could jump into a tag, my top tags. Here's my list. You could see that I've got private ones. There's all kinds of different lists there. Or you can create your own new list. Let me jump up here to the teacher console because obviously with us being the educators, I wanted to make sure I got this piece to you. This is one thing that definitely distinguishes itself, in my opinion, from Delicious, is this is where I can go and create classes. And then you could see here, I can create my student accounts. So if your uh, IT person says, well, you know, you got COPA, SEPA, under the age of 13 stuff because of personal information. Well, you'll notice that I could go in and create a student. So if I wanted to go to add member here, let's go here. I can create my student's accounts or add somebody in, or I could even do a mass upload. So there's some different ways to do that without giving away personal information. And that was, again, just up here in Digo under Teacher Console. And this is on the education side. So there's, a diff there's also that piece. You have Digo, and then you have Digo for Education. So though they... That was one big thing that when they first started out, they were saying, okay, but this may get blocked because of school. So they twisted and made that education side, just like with Glockster and Animoto now having education sides. So those are some of the advantages there. Um, under set, uh, tools, one of the questions was, how do I import stuff? Well, here's where you could get your Digo or Digo Let's. Here's the highlighter for Pad Android for those of you who are fortunate enough to have those phones. Um, we could look at more tools. And here it is. You could go post to Digo, link roles. Does everybody understand what a link role is? Let me jump back in here. Basically, what you see here is I could take this link role, which we do have on the Kansas DIN site. We've taken the Discovery Education Network Digo role, and that's actually on the Kansas blog. I know, I believe Pennsylvania's done it also, to where if it, whoever adds this to that, anybody that adds a bookmark to our DIN group, it will automatically flow through that list so you could always see what everybody's going. So it's neat to kind of take a look at it each day. You could add to the blog. Now here's where it is, you could go into, see where it says save to delicious. So that's what I'm doing. Anything I put into Digo goes to my delicious. So I always have that backup if need be. Or I could click on import bookmarks. And there you go. There's the sites that you could go up to and it'll help you kind of through the easy transition of importing those from that site to Digo. Or you could do the import like here, but they give you all that the stuffs here as well for you. So, um, last thing, because I see we've got about six minutes. So, yes, you're correct, Chelsea. That's under tools, and then I had to say, click on where it said more tools, and then it expanded to show the rest of these on the left hand side. Let's go into uh, my Google Mail. And let me show you something. Okay, what you guys see here, here's my Deagle groups. And these are my daily lists. So when people add something to it, so for example, let me go into literacy and show you this. 
here again is the uh, social networking aspect side of things is that this is a group for on literacy I have a group for acceptable use policies. I mean, it's whatever you're researching for, you could almost find that group already existing. If it doesn't exist, create it. Get everybody to join. But uh, you could see these are folks, and these are the bookmarks they've added. If you remember when I showed you how to bookmark using Digo and we added it to the DIN list and my Sterling College list, well, when people get the list, here it is. And, you know, what's cool is when the people do provide their pictures, you could see who Phil Taylor is. You could see who John Evans is, whatever they're using as an avatar or their image. But here it is. Here's their words, their keywords that they provided. Here's the link. You just got to click on the link, and it takes you to it. You could add a comment. And, you know, again, here's the social aspect of it. You could carry a conversation on with that person about that site just from right there. So, again, I just – encourage you guys to go out and take a look at the groups take a look at the list if there's something not there for you go for it you know and you'll know how many that have been added to that one this one says one the one we just looked at had 18 so it's awesome i guess you could say basically but that's you know where the social aspecting side of things come from and again that's why i also start with Delicious and Digo when it comes time for me to uh, find something for a teacher. And again, like I said, I'm not going to spend forever. Is there any questions over Digo that you guys might have since we've got about three minutes left? Yeah, Laura, weekly updates you could do. Thanks for mentioning that. I kind of and trying to get through some stuff, forgot that. You could do a daily list, a weekly list, or you could be a member of a group and not even get the list. You could go in and say, don't send me a weekly, don't send me an update. It's whatever your personal preference is. There you go, Peggy. That's right. Everybody needs to join the, the DIN group on Digo. So. But any questions over any of these that you see here? And again, this is a live binder. Um, it's a Web 2.0 tool. These ladies are in California. They're awesome. I could talk forever on just live binders. But, um, you know, I just want to say I appreciate everyone that was in here chatting. I uh, hope you've learned something new. It was worthwhile to you. And I uh, appreciate, Steve, you uh, offering this opportunity for me to do this.